Hi, my name is Teresa and I work for Alberta Health Services. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to check for and manage head lice. Lice. These tiny insects can cause a lot of stress and create a lot of work. Anyone who has hair can get head lice. Lice don't cause illness and they don't spread disease. Head lice are spread mainly by touching heads with someone who has head lice. They're not caused by being dirty. They can sometimes be spread by sharing items such as hats, hairbrushes, and combs that were used by someone who has head lice. If one person in the family has it, then likely somebody else does too. So it's important to check the whole family. Especially for parents with school-aged children, it's important to check at least once a week for head lice. About head lice. Head lice are tiny insects that can range from the size of a head of a pin up to the size of a sesame seed, which are the seeds found on hamburger buns. They can vary in colour from tan, brown, dark grey to greyish white. They crawl very quickly, which can make them hard to see, but they don't jump, fly, or swim. Lice are tiny insects and they can cause the scalp to be very itchy. They particularly like behind the ears and the base of the scalp where it's warmer, but they can found, be found anywhere on the head. Head lice do not live on and cannot be spread by family pets. They are only on humans. Every day, adult head lice lay about eight eggs, which are called nits. The nits are stuck to the hair near the scalp. They're hard to see and can sometimes be mistaken for dandruff or hairspray droplets. After the nits hatch, their empty shell stays stuck to the hair. You can't get rid of lice with a hairbrush or with a hair dryer. Life cycle of head lice. It's important to understand the life cycle of head lice to understand the treatment schedule outlined later in this video. Nits take between 7 to 10 days to hatch. The lice become adults 6 to 10 days after the nits have hatched. Only adult lice can lay nits or the eggs. Detection combing, what it is and how to do it. Detection combing is an organized way to look for lice and nits in the hair, from the scalp outwards. You may miss seeing the lice or nits if you only part the hair and look at the scalp. Equipment that you will need for wet detection combing, a plastic fine tooth comb or plastic head louse detection comb, which you can buy at most drugstores, good lighting, daylight is best, a regular comb, white paper towel or tissue, a bowl of warm water, hair clips for longer hair, and a magnifying glass. It's not required, but it may help. Detection combing, how to do it. Step one, wash the hair well, dry it with a towel, then comb through with a regular comb. The hair should be damp so it doesn't become flyaway, which can make it harder for the live lice or nits to stick to the comb. Step two, for long or thick hair, it helps to clip the hair in several sections and thoroughly comb through one section at a time. If you are working with short hair, you do not have to use clips. Change to the fine tooth comb. Start on one side of the head. Use your fingers to part the hair. Place the comb at the top of the head with the teeth touching the scalp. Keep the comb in contact with the scalp as long as possible, slowly pulling the comb towards the end of the hair. Step 3. Look closely at the teeth of the comb. Wipe the comb on the white tissue or paper towel after each stroke. Look at the tissue and the comb to see if there are any live lice. A magnifying glass may help. To know whether or not to treat a case of lice, at least one live louse needs to be found. That's because most head lice treatments only kill live lice, not nits. If there are nits, pay extra attention for a live louse. Sometimes you might see flakes on the hair that look like nits, but are actually dead skin cells or dandruff. You can use a magnifying glass to see the difference. The knit will look more like a teardrop and a dandruff will look flat and scaly. A knit will be more difficult to be removed because it is stuck to the hair. Dandruff can be removed more easily. If you're comfortable, use your fingers to remove the item. If it sticks to the hair, it could be a knit. Once you have combed the hair and looked for live lice, rinse the comb in a sink or bowl of warm water after every stroke, then wipe it dry. Step 5. Comb over and over again from the top of the head to the ends of the hair in all directions until you've worked around the entire head. It should take 10 to 15 minutes depending on how long the hair is. Don't forget, lice and nits can be found anywhere on the head, 
but they especially like behind the ears and the base of the scalp or neck area, as they like dark, warm places. Step 6. When you're done, clean the combs and clips well under running water. Put the tissue you used to clean the combs in the garbage right away. If you find a louse or nits, see washing items for how to clean the combs and clips. How do I know if I need to treat my child? When you do detection combing every three to four days and you find a live louse, treat hair with an approved product. If you find only nits or the eggs, keep detection combing every three to four days for 12 days. Treat the hair if you find a live louse. If you initially find a nit, then you find nothing for 12 days of detection combing, don't treat. If you do one detection comb and don't find nits or a live louse, you don't have to check again until your regular weekly check. If you find something in the hair while you're combing and aren't sure what it is, stick it on a piece of paper or a clear sticky tape and show it to your public health nurse or family doctor. There may be other things in the hair that aren't lice. Treating head lice. Head lice shampoos, cream rinses, and sprays have been tested and are safe and effective treatments for head lice. You can buy them at any pharmacy and you don't need a prescription. If you aren't sure which one is best for your needs, speak with a pharmacist. Read and follow the directions on the head lice shampoo, cream rinse, or spray. You must follow the instructions exactly for the treatment to work, including if the hair has to be wet or dry when treating and when to apply a second treatment. This is where it's important to understand the head lice life cycle. The shampoo, cream rinse, or spray kills the live lice on the head but may not kill the nits. With the first treatment, the live lice should be killed which stops any of the adult lice from laying more nits. The second treatment with the head lice shampoo, cream rinse, or spray is almost always needed 7 to 10 days after the first treatment to kill newly hatched lice who hatched but are too young to be laying any nits. Nits can be laid, hatched, and start laying their own nits in as few as 12 days, which is why it's important for a second treatment within 7 to 10 days before any new nits can be laid. If you're not sure if a second treatment is needed, speak with your pharmacist. You may have to buy more of the same product if you use it on long hair. It's important to use the correct amount of product each time. Using less of the product to make it go further will mean that the head lice can survive and more treatments will be needed. While nits don't need to be removed from the hair, some people use a comb to remove nits after using lice treatment because they don't like the look of the nits in the hair. Washing items. Wash any items that were in contact with the head of the person who has lice, for example combs, brushes, bedding, and hats. Washable items can be machine washed, soaked in hot water, or placed in the dryer on hot heat. Put non-washable items in a sealed plastic bag for two weeks. Lice can't live this long away from the human head. To learn more about cleaning lice from items, go to myhealth.alberta.ca and search lice cleaning. If you'd like to learn more about head lice, speak with your doctor or pharmacist. You can visit your local public health centre or call HealthLink at 811. Thanks for watching this video.